Hello, Construct2 peeps. Today I'm going to be showing you a little tutorial on how to use functions in order to return a random whole number between uh, two parameters. So, say for instance, 1 and 10. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new project. Doesn't really matter for the purposes of uh, example. We're just going to use this. Now, what we need to do is, of course, add the object type. And we need the function object type. So, we can actually use you know, function functions, so to speak. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add an event, now function, now on function, and we are just going to allow this to be named ran, so whenever you need to call the function ran, we are going to use function action and then set the return value. Now what this will do is this will essentially, if this is the only uh, or the final action, it will set the return value to any number you provide. So for instance the default value is zero so when you run this it'll always return a zero value but that's not what we want. So what we want to do is we're going to actually use the current random function that Sura provides in their construct too and then um, for the purposes of example let's take these two numbers between 1 and 10. Now while this is nice it will return a floating point uh, number and instead we want whole numbers. <clears throat> now you may be thinking why don't we just round the number between 1 and 10. Well what happens if you round a value, a random value that's between 1 and 3? Well, between the ranges of 1.51, let's say, to 2.49, that will always, always, always round to 2, which means there's only a approximately a 0.5 range in which you will get either 1 or either 3. Now, we don't want that because that creates an uneven distribution of numbers, of random numbers, and that's heavily skewed. The players can eventually you know, figure out what's going on, and make guesses or things based on whatever your game is. So what we want to do next is instead add the floor function. Now flooring the value will floor one point, or sorry, from will floor the values from let's say 1 to 1.4, uh, sorry, 1.99, all those values will floor to 1. Okay. Now, however, the problem is once we get to 3, we will never, ever, ever, ever get to 3 because the random generator that Siri provides will only generate numbers up to 2.99, if I'm remembering correctly. So what we need to actually do, and even if it did, we would almost, we would almost never get the actual value of 3, so that wouldn't really work. Now, for instance, what happens if you take the number from 1 to 3? We want 1 to 3, however, we're adding a 1 to the 3. Now what this does is that will actually provide a random number, a true random number. It's only very, very ever so slightly skewed because of, again, of the, of the uh, values that it actually generates. But it will return the number correctly as we want a number from 1 to 3, a random whole number from 1 to 3. And now what we want to do is we want to make sure that, however, you know, we need parameters, of course. So when you provide a parameter 0 from of 1 and a parameter 1 of 10 you will get a random whole number between 1 and 10. Now that's very very handy. So what we want to do is we want to take the function dot param of number of parameter 0 and then we are going to change this to function dot param 1. Okay? Now, essentially, this means that whenever we generate the a, a number, we are going to get a whole number that actually corresponds and is in the range of the numbers that we want. All right, now we're going to test this. Now you can see what I've done here is that I've added a touch object type and said that on any touch start, we're going to call our function here ran and use these two parameters 1 and 10 and so what this should do is return a value between 1 and 10, a whole number. Now what we're also going to do is we're going to need to set our little text here that I also added and we're going to set the text and what we're going to do is we're going to set it to function return value and so what this will do is it will set it to the return value of this function call which should be between 1 and 10. Now we're going to just test that out. 3, 5, 4, 1. Alright. There we go. So in any touch, basically that's what we set it to. 
it's going to return a random whole number between the range of the values that we provide. And that's also that's also some, sort of a basic introduction to functions in themselves too. Um, you can apply this to many different things. Now, just to add that this function can actually be used to return a negative uh, variable value as well, because uh, the floor function will always round to the uh, essentially think of think of uh, random numbers that you're generated between negative five to five, and then think of the value let's say four point negative four point five. What you're actually doing with floor with the floor function is rounding to the left of the number line. So if you think of all these numbers as a gigantic number line, you're always rounding to the left. Well, even though let's say 0 0.1 will floor to 0, negative 0 0.1 will always floor to negative 1 because it's towards the left of the number line. Now you'll get if if you don't already know this or if you're not used to it, you'll get used to it. It's very simple, it's just a little thing to keep in mind though when you for instance when you're using random functions like this. So, thanks again for watching. I tried not to keep it a little too long, but I was hoping to describe enough of this so you guys could get a feel for generating these numbers, creating little functions for yourself. And so thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. I'm thinking of covering a little thing about the Angry Birds template that was recently released, so just keep an eye out, and hopefully I can get that finished soon.